Well, we're talking about stress. Actually, what we're talking about is learning how to live more stress-free, not as stressful as we have, so that we can find joy, we can hold on to peace, and that when we encounter the, the situations in life, the storms of life, the circumstances of life, that we will remain in control us, but, but we will be in control. So that's what we're really talking about here concerning, concerning stress, and I'm hoping that we're getting it. I, I've enjoyed some of your emails that I've gotten this week and some of the phone calls and just talking to people. I've, I've so enjoyed hearing you. Uh, you're talking about stress. You're, 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 I've got one email that says, I hope you're having a, a stress-free day. You know, so what, what, we're, what we're learning then is, is that this is taking. You're identifying stress. When it happens, you're saying, I am not going to let this get me. And that's very, very good. That's exactly what the Lord wants to happen in, in this series. Now, today what I want to talk about is rest, not stress. Now, let me tell you quickly what, what we're going to be talking about. You see, what the enemy wants you to do is enter into stress. That's where he can control you. But what God wants you to do is enter into rest. Now, this is what we're going to be doing, and God has a rest already made for us. We're going to talk about that, and when we can enter into it, we're going to make good decisions. We're, we're not going to run our blood pressure up. We're, we're going to live in a more stress-free way. We're going to live life at its best and not live in stress. So what I want you to do, if you will, if you'll repeat back to me, rest, not stress. Would you say that back? Rest, not stress. There you go. Now, you see, here's what happens in life. Every single day of our lives, we have an opportunity to stress. We have, we have these things that are happening to us constantly, <laughs> like right now. <laughs> and we have these things that are happening to us constantly, and, and we, don't, we can't always handle them. You know, maybe, for example, you got a bad report from the doctor, or maybe a loved one that, that you have has gotten a bad report from the doctor, maybe that's what's happening in you, and, and it has an opportunity to stress you out. Or maybe you have a child that's, uh, that's having problems, and so that could stress you out. Or maybe you're facing a layoff at work, that'll stress you out. Every single day of our lives, we have an opportunity to experience something that will cause us stress. Uh, every one of us, probably, if we were honest, in this room, if we're dealing with life, we're dealing with something right now. And am I right? I mean, most of us are probably dealing with something that could cause us stress. And we could, we could do it the right way or we could do it the wrong way. We could enter into stress or we could enter into God's rest. We could do it the wrong way, get all upset about it, let it run our blood pressure up, let us make bad decisions, let it, let it take control of our lives and, and control us and get everybody else stressed up, or we could do it God's way. But you see, here's what I really want us to see is, is that if, if you're that way and you let stress determine your peace, then you're never going to experience consistent peace in life. That's the truth. Here's why. is because there's always stress. There's always circumstances. There's always a storm. There's always something to deal with. And so if you're constantly doing life, which you are, and there's always these stressful things and you can't have any peace because you're allowing the situations to determine if you have peace or not, you're never going to have stress. I mean, you're never going to have peace. That's all you're going to have is stress. Now, what we've, what we've done in, in teaching at, about faith is, is that we've taught that faith is basically something that we use to get rid of problems, to get us to get around problems or get, make problems go away. But what I've learned is that if I will use my faith to control me, not to try to control my problem, if I'll use my faith to control me, I'll find out that what God will do is God will slip into the situation and he'll turn my situation around. You see, what happens is when we, when we allow God to move into our, to our situation, we've got to realize that God's never promised us that he's going to give us a problem-free life. That's not what God has said. In fact, he kind of tells us the opposite. What he has promised us, though, is this. Is, is that we can enter in any kind of situation, go through any kind of storm, and experience his peace. And what God wants us to live in is peace. And so we've got to learn how to live in peace and live in God's rest and not in the enemy's stress. So the book of Hebrews talks a lot about a place of rest that God has prepared. 
Now, I want to read you this. There are several verses in the scriptures, in the book of Hebrews specifically, concerning this rest. But I want to show you one. And this one is in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 3. It says, for only we who believe can enter his place of rest. Only we who believe can enter. And it goes on. As for those who didn't believe, God said, in my anger, I made a vow. They will never enter my place of rest. Even though the place of rest has been ready since he made the world. What I want you to get, leave it up there just for a second, please. What I want you to get is is that true belief includes rest. And what this verse does emphasize is those who, we who truly believe. And when I explain the context to you, you'll, you'll see what I'm saying. Because there's a lot of people that say they believe, but they don't. If we truly believe that God's going to take care of situations for us, if we truly believe that God's in control, we can enter into a rest. Truth, belief. Now what happens is, is when I enter, you can take that, when, when I enter into a rest, it already was, when, when, I, when I enter into the rest of God, what happens is, is that I come closer to God. I'm trusting in Him. I'm believing that He's going to take care of it. When I enter into stress, I'm trying to deal with it myself. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying to manipulate it. I'm letting it run my blood pressure up. I'm letting it make me sick. I'm saying things I wished I wouldn't have said. I'm going to do things I wished I hadn't have done. My decision-making process isn't good. And what I do when I enter into the enemy's stress is I move away from God's power. Now let me show you the context of that verse that we just read. The context of that verse was the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And, of course, they murmured and they complained the the whole time going to the promised land. But once they got there, you know the story. Moses sent in 12 spies. And they were in there 40 days. They came back. Ten of them had a very bad report. They came back talking about the giants and talking about the big old walled cities and talking about the aspects of war. And they're going to kill us. And we're but grasshoppers before them. And and, and they're going to kill us. They're going to kill our families. They're going to kill our children. We would have been better in Egypt. And they came back with this negative report. The other two, Caleb and Joshua, came back with a very positive report. And they says, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's true. There are giants. There are, there are big people. There are big cities and walled cities. There, there are all the, but man, this land is flowing with milk and honey. You just will not believe it. Well, God's for us. God's going to take care of us. God's going to fight for us. And they came back with a rest in God, where the other ten came back with the stress of the enemy. And so what this stress of the enemy caused the whole congregation of people, millions of them, was to come into stress themselves and say, we're not going in. We're not going to do it. And you know the story. And God says, okay, you'll never go in then. And so they turned around and they went back into the wilderness. And out there in the wilderness, every single one of them died, never entering into the promise of God. What I want you to see is stress will keep you from God's best. Stress will rob you of God's promise. It'll make you turn around and lose territory. And that's exactly what the enemy wants to happen. And so if he can get you stressed out, then he's going to start winning the battle. So, you you know the story. They died out there. Only Caleb and Joshua went in because they believed in God's rest. And God raised up a whole new generation to go into that land. Now, now, the, the, the rest of God is available for you. It, it's available. You can have it. You can enter into it. Don't allow stress to stop you from getting what God has for you. Amen. We've got to come to a place in our lives where, where we, we go and do it God's way and we let the Lord uh, tell us how to do it. See, we try to fix everything. We, we try to fix it. And, and, and that's not my job. That's not your job. I, I know this sounds strange. Now, I'm not talking about sticking your head in the sand, acting like it's, it's not there. It is there. But what, I, what I'm talking about here is that we, it's not our job to fix it. Our job is to rest in God. And that is a big job. It's way more difficult than it sounds. But God says, if you'll enter into my rest then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come with my power and I'm going to fight for you. Because you see, like we were talking earlier, in life there's always going to be giants. 
In, in life, there's always going to be giant problems in life. There's always going to be these walled situations that seem we cannot conquer. In life, there's always going to be this warfare going on. It, it, it's, it's just going to be that way. So we've got to learn how to not go into stress and miss our blessing, but enter into God's rest so that we can get all he's got for us. Entering into rest, holding on to your peace, is spiritual warfare. It, it, it is. When a person can hold on to their peace, when a person, when the bottom falls out in life and the storms come, when the bottom falls out in life and a person is holding on to their peace and not letting, getting into stress, they're standing against the enemy. When I stand strong in my peace and hold on to, to my rest in God, what I am doing is I'm proving to God, God, I trust you. Lord, I know you're in control. I don't understand it, but I know I can trust you. And I know you're going to make me come out of this thing better than it was when I went in it. If I do it right, God's going to bless me and God's going to bring me into the place that I want to be. God's going to bless me. He's going to take me into my promised land. <clears throat> See, I want us to get that. We, we want to fix it. And fixing it's not our job. Our main job is to try to get to a place where we can rest in God. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge every single one of you to enter into God's rest. The next time, and, and you're getting to where you can identify stressful things, but make a declaration and say it to yourself. I am not going to let this get to me. I am going to stay in rest. I am not going to be... <laughs> A yo-yo Christian. Down and up and down and up. I'm not going to let circumstances that I'm experiencing in storms of life determine whether I'm down or whether I'm up. God says, I want to make your crooked places straight. I want to make your high places low and your low places high. What he's saying here is I want to make things level for you. I want you to have a good level, average, good life. Just nothing, nothing really going crazy. I want to make it good for you. Blessed life. But, but nothing, nothing up and down, like a roller coaster. I don't want to be a roller coaster Christian. I, I don't want to be up today and down tomorrow. I want you, when you see me, that you say, you know, he's, he's the same whether he's having a good day or whether he's having a bad day. I want to be stable. God wants us to be stable. Jesus was in, in a boat one day, and he was, he was tired. He had been ministering to a lot of people, and he was in the boat with his guys, and they were out in the water. And the Bible says that Jesus was asleep in the back of the boat on a cushion, with his head on a cushion. Now, this is not surprising until you find out that they were in a fierce storm. And there's water in the boat. Now, I know a little bit about boating. And when water comes in the boat, it goes to the back of the boat. I want to read this to you. It's in, it's in the book of Mark, chapter 4, verse 37. It says, but soon a fierce storm arose... High waves began to break into the boat until it was nearly full of water. And Jesus was sleeping. He was resting. He's in God's rest in the storm. Sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. Frantically or stressfully, they woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you even care that we're going to drown? Oh, I want to make sure you see something here. See, even Jesus could not avoid storms. You're, you're not going to avoid the storm. But you make the decision if you're going to be in the storm or if the storm's going to be in you. you you're going to make the decision if you're going to let this get into you and mess you up. Or if it's something that you're just going to work through so that you can enter into your promise. Jesus stood up. He just spoke to it. Peace, be still. One, one translation says, quieten down. And then he turned to the guys and he says this. Verse 40. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? Why are you so stressed out? How is it that you have no faith? Why is it? Ask, let's answer that question. Why is it that they had no faith? Why is it that they were so fearful? It's because they entered into stress, not rest. 
We've all got to come to a place where, where, where we say like Jesus. See what basically Jesus is saying here. This is no big deal. It's no big deal. Everything's going to be okay. And he in the middle of the storm, but the storm wasn't in the middle of him. And when we come to a place in our lives where we can say things, this is no big deal. Now, it is a big deal when you're facing it. It is. But what you've got to do is say, it's no big deal. I'm going to rest in God. I'm going to enter into God's rest, and God's going to take care of this thing. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus said, peace be still. God showed up on the scene, calmed the seas, calmed the water, and all the guys were simply amazed. They said, what kind of manner of man is this? What kind of person? He's got something we don't have. Even the wind and the waves obey him. And so maybe you're facing something like that. Maybe, maybe you feel like you're sinking. Maybe you feel like, you know, you're going to drown. It's, it's, a, it's a tough situation. Maybe that's how, how you feel. But what you've got to come to the place of saying is, is listen, I know that I'm going to rest in God. I know that God's going to take care of me. I'm going to believe. I'm not going to just say I believe. I'm really going to believe. I'm going to put my faith through action. You see, here's what we do is we say we have faith. And, and then we let something come along to test our faith, and we find out that we really don't have faith. If I say I have faith, I can say I have faith all day long. And then when a situation comes up, if I try to handle it and manipulate it and work it out and get all stressed out about it, I haven't told the truth. I really don't have faith. Because faith is when I can rest in God. One thing about Daniel... Daniel had a lot of stressful situations in his life. There were a lot of, a lot of things. When you study the life of Daniel, man, he, he had a lot of things to stress out about. But one of those was about his prayer life. He was told not to pray. And Daniel says, I'm going to pray. And so what he does is he just opens the window. He's not like hiding it. He opens the windows and he, and he prays and he gets arrested. And you know the story. They throw him into a lion's den. Everybody knows the story about Daniel in, in the lion's den. Let me, let me read it to you. Daniel 6, 16. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him. That's kind of stressful. <laughs> threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. Now, the, the king really wasn't being obnoxious here. He really cared about Daniel, and he really was hoping that God would rescue Daniel from those, but the odds were not there. <laughs> but what did Daniel do? Did Daniel stress out? Did he get his whip out and his chair out and start fighting those lions? <laughs> you know, I was thinking about it. Every single picture image that I've ever seen trying to portray that, how Daniel handled that situation, Daniel's just chilling it in there. You know, I've, I've seen him where he's just laying, laying on the line. Have anybody seen that one? Where he's just laying, he's just, he's just laid back on that big old kitty cat. <laughs> and, and, and you know what happens? God, see, Daniel said this, no big deal. Everything's going to be okay. God can shut the mouths of these lions. And you know what he did? He did. God shut the mouths of the lion. King comes back the next day, oh, Daniel, you okay? Yes, I am all fine, Lord. Lord, God shut the mouths of the lions. And we all experience the mouths of lions. We all experience times when people want to devour us with their tongues and with their mouth. They talk about us. They put us down. But let me tell you, you can try to handle that yourself. You can try to fight it. Or you can just rest in God and let God shut their mouths. God wants us to learn how to rest, not stress. No big deal. Everything's going to be okay. The children of Israel had just been delivered from Egypt. God had delivered them, the Bible says, with a mighty hand. They came out, they had seen all these plagues and, and all of these things that God did to Egypt to set them free. They came forth following the cloud. Now, this is what's interesting. They're following the glory cloud of God, and they find out they're in a tough spot. They've got the Red Sea in front of them and Pharaoh's army coming up behind them. They're in a bad place. What do they do? Well, they stress. Now, they can try to fix this thing themselves. They can't whip Pharaoh's army. And they can't swim the Red Sea. So now they start complaining. They're just murmuring, complaining. They're stressing out. They're going off on Moses. In Exodus chapter 14 and verse 11, it says this. 
Then they turned against Moses and complained. Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Have you ever noticed that when you're stressing out, it's always somebody else's fault? You're always looking for somebody to blame. So let's blame Moses. Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? Why did you make us leave? Make them leave. That's not the way I remember that. Why did you make us leave? Didn't we tell you to leave us alone while we were still in Egypt? Our Egyptian slavery was far better than dying out here in the wilderness. Moses didn't let that get into him. He didn't care what they said. Moses was in this mess, but the mess wasn't in Moses. What Moses did was take the rod that he had been given by God or anointed by God. It was his rod already, but he just used it. And he stuck it out across the Red Sea. And he just spoke to the sea. And here's what he says. Listen, you guys. He said, chill down. Don't stress, and we're going to see something amazing happen here. Watch this. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. Fear you not. Don't stress. Stand still. Hold on to your peace. Don't get all worried here. Stand still. And see what? See what? See the salvation of the Lord. Uh, You know, I want to say this to us. We miss a lot of of a saving from God from situations and circumstances when we're in a tight place because we will not stand still because we want to fear, we want to stress, we want to manipulate it, we want to try to work it out. Moses says, no, that's not how you see salvation. What you, how you see salvation is if you'll stand still, not stress out, don't get all feared. See the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today You shall see them again no more forever. There's a little emphasis there. Now watch. The Lord shall fight for you. That's your job. That's his job. Your job is you shall hold your peace. Now holding your peace doesn't mean just not talking. Not saying something. Not saying, giving somebody a piece of your mind. That's not holding on to your peace means holding to your peace, not letting something get your peace. And when we'll do that, we're going to enter into God's rest. We're going to experience God's best. That's when God's at his best. And we're going to experience the things that that we want to have. Moses told him, don't stress out here. Moses said, if you'll hold on to your peace. Moses says, if you'll not stress out, you're going to see God do something good. God, the Lord God, is going to fight for you. I love that. I don't know about you, but, but I really don't want people to know when I'm under some stressful things. Some things that could cause me to stress. I really don't want people to know. I want people to see me kind of steady. I want to have a life not like a yo-yo life or not like an up and down uh, life that that, that so many Christians live. You know, you see people, they go into these things and it looks like they've eaten a lemon. They're sour. They're bitter. Everything's bad. The world's bad. Everything's bad. And and, and they go into this this place where nothing's good. And, And this is exactly where the enemy wants you to be. He wants us to get right there. They get into their pity parties, they, they get into their, to their stressful things, and, and they talk about it, that's all they want to talk about. I, want, I don't want that. When, when I am going through a tough time, I want to be steady. I want to be stable. Here's why. It's not just so I can project myself as something that I'm not. I want to do that because I'm entering into God's rest. And if I'm really stable and steady, even though I'm going through a stressful time, what, what's happening and what I'm really saying is, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I'm going to do it right. And if I do it right, then I know you're going to show up and what you're going to do for me is calm the storm. I know that you're going to shut the mouths of the lions. I know if, if I do it right, Lord, and enter into your rest, that you're going to open the Red Sea for me. I know, Lord God, if I do it right and don't let this thing get to me and I stay stable, then, Lord, you're going to show up. You're going to do something for me. It wasn't long ago, I went through a very stressful time, very stressful situation. And, and, and if you knew me, you knew I was do, going through it. But, but if, you, if you just met me or saw me or whatever, 
you wouldn't know I was going through anything. You would think I was the happiest person in the whole world. I tried my best. Though I was in the middle of a storm, I tried my best not to let that storm be in me. I wouldn't talk about it. And you could bring it up and I might say something to you about it, but I would not dwell on it. I would not think about it. I would not let that thing get me. I was determined to do it right. Because I have learned over the years that if I'll do it right and stay in God's stress, <laughs> oops, oops, stay in God's rest, <laughs> if I'll do it right and stay in God's rest, then what God will do is he'll show up. And though, and though, and though I'm, I'm, I'm sort of concerned here, I can actually lay down and put my head on a cushion, knowing that Jesus is in the boat with me, knowing that he's going to calm this sea. Knowing that those things that people are saying that's going to, that want to devour me, I know he's going to shut the mouths of the lions. I know that though I'm in a tough spot here, and it doesn't seem to be a way out, that if I do it right, what God's going to do is open up the Red Sea. I, I've learned this. You can't tell me that God won't show up for you and fight for you if you'll do it right, which is meaning entering into his rest, doing it his way. Letting him handle the problem instead of me handling the problem. I, I, I know this person, and he was going through a very stressful time. His job was just totally stressing him out. And we all saw it coming. We knew it was happening. He knew it was happening, but it didn't seem like he could stop it. He was trying to manipulate things and do things the way he wanted them to, to be done. And, and, and one day he calls me. He calls me on the phone, and, and he, says, he says, here's what's going on. He's actually in the middle of a panic attack. On the phone. He's in the middle of a panic attack. And I pray for him and I calm him down and I immediately say, hey, it's going to be okay. I said, what's happening here is, is that you've got to have some things happen in your life that you can't pull off. You can't make these things happen. And you're trying to make them happen and this, not, this, this is going to require God. God alone and God only is going to make this happen for you. So what you've got to do is get your hand off of it. You've got to step back and you've got to allow the Lord to move in here. You've got to, basically what I was telling him is that you've got to enter the Lord's rest. And you can't stress. Well, to make a, a long story short, what he did is he kind of did that. He backed off from a little bit. And I'm telling you, it was absolutely amazing. It was supernatural what happened. Well, just in a, in, a, in a very, very short time, he changed, he changed his organizations. He got all of these job opportunities that came to him, and, and he's now changed the, orga the organization he was working with. He's making 40% more money than he was making there. He's, he's actually looking forward to, to the job and looking forward to doing what he's supposed to be doing anyway. It's just amazing. You can't tell me God won't show up for you if you'll do it right and if you'll enter into rest and not go into the enemy's stress. You see, so many of us want to, want to go into the stress of the thing, and that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. See, if, if, we, if we enter into it, what, we, what people do is when they get into a bad situation in a stressful time, they, they get depressed, they get negative, they get sick, they get down, they'll stop coming to church. They do exactly what the devil wants them to do. And what we want to learn how to do is not what the devil wants us to do, and lose our blessing, lose our promised land, but to learn how to enter into God's rest and let God show up for us and take care of us. It's a great thing. Let me say this. The enemy cannot defeat a person who remains in the Lord's rest. And will not stress. Think about that. The enemy cannot defeat a person who will enter into the Lord's rest. Let the Lord fight for them and not go into stress. It's a great thing to have people pray for you and with you. So I'm, I'm going to say something and I want you to balance it because I'm trying to make a point and I'm swinging the pendulum. You know how that works, right? We, we go way over to make a point. And, uh, and it's a great thing to have people pray for you. But I think the greatest testimony that we can give is that when we go through some tough times and some storms of life, and nobody even knows we went through them. I think that should be the goal of every Christ follower. That we're so stable, that we're so trusting in the Lord, that we're in the middle of these crises, and nobody knows that we're in a, in a crisis. Now, let me, let me balance that just a little bit. I'm not saying stick your head in the sand and act like nothing's going on in your life. No, 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 don't, don't deny it. It's real. 
Just don't magnify it. Don't magnify the problem, magnify God. And if we magnify God, then we're going to find God's going to show up and he's going to turn the situation around for us. This is, this is what God really wants us to learn how to do, is, is not go into the times of, of stress, but enter into God's times of rest. See, it, it's knowing that even when we're in a bad time, that God's going to be there for us. It, it's knowing that no matter what storm of life I encounter and that I'm facing, that if I do it right, stay close to God, then what God's going to do is show up for me. I'm going to rest in Him. It's knowing that even if you did get that bad doctor's report, that you're not going down because Jesus is in the boat with you. It's knowing that even though your, your child is having some problems, it's knowing that he's going to be okay. Everything's going to be all right here. It's knowing that even though we're in an economic time where, where you may be facing a layoff, it's knowing that God will open the Red Sea for you. It's knowing that when people, even when people are attacking you, it's knowing that God himself will shut the lion's mouth. It's knowing that God's there. That's what God wants to see in each and every one of us. I, I'm not telling you now to not let people pray for you. You understand what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I, I'm talking about here is trusting the Lord. I think we should do it all. I think we should have hands laid on us. I think we should be anointed with oil. I think we should fast. I think we should pray. I think we should take communion. I, I, I think we should get the prayer chain going. I think we should do it all. I do. But the greatest testimony is when we're really going through something and we believe God that much that he's going to take us through. Anything and everything that we struggle with. Oh, Delbert, you're just, you're just trying to get everybody pumped up. You're just trying to, just trying to get everybody's hopes built up. You're absolutely right. You see, the book of Hebrews chapter, one and, chapter 11 and verse 1 says that faith is the substance of things what? Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. You see, if, if, if I can't get you hoping, you, you're not going to have faith. And if you don't have faith, you can't enter into God's rest. And so what God wants us all to do is be hopeful. And if we can be hopeful, we can enter into God's rest. And God's going to show up with his best. Here's what God wants us to understand today. Listen, you change your life by changing the way you think. What am I hearing? What am I hearing? Radio. Radio. Yeah. We change. <laughs> I know that's, that's enjoyable. We change our life by changing the way we think. We change the situations that we're in, the circumstances that we're facing, by changing how we're thinking about them. If you're stressed out about them, and you're trying to handle them yourself, it's not going to go well. If you'll change how you think about it, and trust God with it, then what God's going to do is show up for you. I want you to know today that every single day of your life, you're going to have something with the potential to stress you out. You're going to have something that wants to consume your mind, cause you problems, get your blood pressure up, cause you to get sick, cause you to say things, do things, make bad decisions every single day of your life. But it's up to you whether you want to be in the storm or let the storm be in you. If you, if you will just do it God's way, God will calm the storm. If you'll enter into his rest... Don't allow stress to stop you from going into your promised land. God's got some wonderful things for you. Stress will rob you of them. Stress will cause you to turn around and live the rest of your life in the wilderness when you could be living in the land of milk and honey. If you do it right, God will calm the seas. God will do some amazing events for your life. He'll shut the mouths of lions. There's always going to be giants. There's always going to be walled situations. There's always going to be warfare going on. It's just up to you whether you want to try to swim the Red Sea yourself or let God part it for you. We decide. We decide immediately. I am not letting this into me. I am entering into God's rest. I am not going into God's stress. If you'll do that, I promise you, and I can say this with all the confidence in the world, if you do it and enter into God's rest... I have no problem at all of knowing, just as confident as I can be, that God will make everything good for you. 
it will be okay. If you do it that way, you're going to live healthier, you're going to live happier, you're going to live longer, and you're going to sit back and enjoy life in a way that you didn't think possible. The key is entering into God's rest. So let's rest and not stress. Let's pray. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for our time together. Thank you for your word. Lord, I really believe that we're getting a handle on this stress thing and, and that you want us to live a less stressful life. You want us to give life and live life in peace and that we can give peace to others, that, that we won't give stress to others and we won't minister stress, but, but we'll minister peace. So, Father, I pray for each one here today, Lord God, that you've touched our hearts, you've touched our minds, that, Lord, we're going to go out of here with a little better understanding of the enemy's working and how he wants to stop us from experiencing our promised lands by stress. Once your head's bowed and your eyes closed, I just want to ask you a question. If you're like me and you have the, you have the, the idea that I can fix it, I can manipulate it, I can holler at it loud enough, I can, I can get mad enough at it. I can, I can do this or I can do that and I can take care of it. Maybe that's how you think. See, that's sometimes how I think. But what the Lord is really trying to show me and I'm hoping he's showing you is that if I will just enter into his rest and not get all stressed about it, that he's going to show up. I want to ask you, how many of you really want that in your life? How many of you really want to see, you would, you would admit then you would say, yeah, I try to take care of things. I try to manipulate things. I try to do things my way. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And I make lots of things worse. And, and I really want to have God moving in my life. I really want to enter into God's rest. I don't want to miss any promised land God has for me. If that's you, along with me, would you say, yeah, Lord, help me. Help me live a more stressless life. Is that you? Would you raise your hand right where you're sitting? Let me pray for you. I see hands everywhere. Father, I do. I ask you, Lord, to bless these people. Lord, help us each one. Lord, let us understand that your plan is not for us to live in stress, but to live in rest. And that you're at your best, Lord, when we're in your rest. So, Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that you touch every life here. That, Lord, we can live happier. We can live healthier. We can live longer if we'll just learn how to live more stress free. Head still bowed, eyes still closed. Now, some of you aren't where you need to be with God. See, that, that, that verse that we read about the rest of God says that only we who believe, only we who truly believe, can enter into his rest. See, if you're not having a relationship with Jesus Christ and you know you're not where you need to be with God, you're going to go through life, crises after crises after crises, there's no way you're going to be enter, able to enter into God's rest when you're far from God. You've got, to, you've got to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. And as you do that, then God will show up for you. He will calm your storms. He will shut the lion's mouths that are trying to devour you. He will open a Red Sea for you so that you can find a way to your promised land. God will show up for you. But you've got to believe in Him. You've got to receive Him as your Lord and your Savior. So if that's you today and you're just not where you need to be with God and you know it, would you let me pray for you right where you're sitting? If that's you, would you raise your hand right where you're sitting? I see your hand right here. Any others? I see another hand over there. Any others? Any others? I see your hand back there in the back.